As of recording this, Spider-Man No Way Home has been in theaters for almost 12 hours now, which means it's been entirely spoiled on the internet for like four days already. And since I already got a spoiler-free review out, now it's my turn. So let this be the only warning I give you. This video contains spoilers. The whole thing is a, a massive spoiler for Spider-Man No Way Home. If you want to see something that's clean, no real plot details or anything ruined, check out my spoiler-free video. And you might as well subscribe while you're at it. All right, let's begin. A few weeks back, the final trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home came out. I think I called it final trailer, something like that. And people said, this isn't the final trailer. They're, they're gonna have another one before the movie hits. Well, you are wrong. Two or three people that said that. And I want an apology in writing on the computer or on your phone so that I can see it. It was a very specific way to tell you to apologize. I also made predictions in that video. And they were all correct. I could be making these up, but I'm pretty sure it sounds right. The first thing I said was that the original Spider-Man, Spider-Mans, I think it's Spider-Man, would show up in the last half hour of this movie. That was spot on. I also said they'd probably have about 20 minutes of screen time. I think that's about right. I think that's probably about right. I also predicted Andrew Garfield would be the one to save MJ in that shot where she's falling in slow motion because it parallels what happened to Gwen Stacy. And he did. I was right. That was that was a 100% prediction. Nailed. What I was hoping for that unfortunately didn't come to fruition. For, for wishin, for we, I think that's... We're just gonna move on. Was that the main plot didn't revolve around Peter Parker being a jackass and constantly interrupting the teacher while he was performing a magical spell. Unfortunately, that's exactly what the plot is. And that sucks. Because that's like the big hang up I have with this movie, which I liked. Calm down. I really enjoyed this film. But here, let me just, let me just back up. Did you know? And this has been going on since the dawn of time. You can criticize something you like. Hell, you can criticize something you love. I criticize my wife and children all the time. <laughs> and they criticize me too. No one's perfect. So even though I have quite a few qualms with the plot of this movie, the little pieces all add up to something amazing. Something spectacular, if you will. Spider-Man references. Subscribe. Peter Parker's life has been flipped upside down and not in the fun Fresh Prince of Bel-Air style where there's laughs and uh, he moves into a mansion and he fights with his uncle. No, this is a bad flipped upside down. He goes to complain to Doctor Strange that now he's popular and people like him but some people also don't like him and his friends can't get into the college they wanted to. So he grovels to Doctor Strange to do a spell to make this all go away. Make these people forget that he's Spider-Man Except for he keeps adding exceptions on top and that makes the whole thing go Mickey Mouse, Looney Tunes shit. One, it makes Peter Parker look so freaking dumb. He's whining while Doctor Strange is doing the spell. Incompetence beyond all incompetence. Two, it makes Doctor Strange look like a jackass. Pompous. You think he maybe would have checked his ego a little bit at the door after 50% of the galaxy was wiped out for five years, but no, he still seems to be as arrogant as ever before. What's even more perplexing to me is they talk about the time stone not being available to turn back what happened, but the spell he casts is insanely powerful. They kind of shrug it off like, eh, it's no big deal. You're wiping the memories of everyone. That's a big deal. And the fact that if he goes even a little south, it can rip open the tears in the galaxy and spill other universes in. The fabric of time is completely displaced. Yeah, that, that sounds bad. And to just kind of off the cuff do it is, is just silly. That's my big beef with the film. It unfortunately is something that keeps creeping in throughout the movie as it unfolds. Now I understand heroes can make mistakes. That's part of their charm is the relatability. He's a young kid, he's naive, he's dumb. He's thinking about himself and his friends. Doctor Strange is not young or naive. And they both were together when everyone was wiped out. So you think there would just be a little bit more responsibility at this point. Okay, I'm gonna move past it but events keep cropping up that make you go, oh my God, what a shit show. This should never have happened. This should never have happened. I'm going to apologize if I miss anything. I just saw the movie, I've only seen it once and I don't take notes during it. I don't have like a, a recording pen or anything. I'm just a movie goer watching it and excited about it like you are. Or maybe you hate these movies and you just wanna hear me talk and bitch maybe a little bit, but uh, frankly, I, I really like the film. There's enough else that's working really well to make me go, okay, fine, this is, we're here. 
We're here. I just have to understand that these are family kids movies at the end of the day. They're not as serious or dark as I want them to be. And that's fine. Hom Homecoming was never set up that way. They're fun. They're breezy. They're silly. And this does retain the humor. It has the same elements the previous two did. And I like that it's consistent. I like that the teachers were brought back in. Some of the students have smaller cameos. It does feel like a bigger scale event. And the tone, while it is consistent, also does have a higher stake to it. You can, you can feel it. You can feel it in those opening moments of the film where he's on the run with MJ and somehow not snapping her neck every time he does some sort of a crazy stunt with her. J.K. Simmons is back as J. Jonah Jameson. That's another big thing for fans. And throughout this movie, he's kind of narrating it. He's doing his his web show or whatever the hell it is, his podcast. I will say in the initial trilogy, the Sam Raimi films, J. Jonah Jameson is such a delight. He's just... He's just so iconic on screen and he's hilarious. He's likable, even though he's an absolute asshole. Here, he's just an absolute asshole. When you take away the charming aspects of him and his coworkers and the way he bounces things off of others, he really is just like a conspiracy theorist douchebag. So if you were looking for the J. Jonah Jameson of old, unfortunately that's missing and it's, it's too bad. I really would have liked to see the more comical style, especially when there's plenty of comedy in this. I'm trying to get all the little stuff out of the way so I can get into the meat of this conversation. And I think we're there. I, if I missed anything, I apologize. You can let me know in the comments. The worst kept secret in cinema history unfolds in the last half hour, 40 minutes of the film, when Andrew Garfield shows back up in that portal that Ned created because now he has a Doctor Strange ability, and then Tobey Maguire. The Ned thing, being able to create portals without any sort of training and whatnot, is he gonna be called a Mary Sue for this? I'm gonna guess no. But it felt kind of unearned, the fact that he could just do this. I feel like Doctor Strange had to go through some pretty pretty grueling intense training before he can make a portal appear. We all learn at different paces, I guess, especially if the script requires it. I'm not sure if I mentioned it here, but I'm not a big fan of the Amazing Spider-Man movies, although I think Andrew Garfield's delightful. And this movie really showcases how good he can be if he was given better material to work with. Out of all the Spider-Man actors going into this film, he was at the bottom. But after watching this movie, boop, 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 He's at the top. He has the comedy chops. He has the lovability. He's got the hair. He's got the look. That doesn't mean I'm not Team Tobes going forth. I love him. He's he's so. It was so nice to see him back again. It was just nice to see all three of them back together and not leaked in a photo early by some jackass YouTuber who claims it's not a real photo. Fucking prick. I'm pretty sure there was people in my comments defending that too. You also owe me an apology. There should be like eight apologies in the comments. <sighs> Fucking John Campia. I wasn't avoiding saying his name for any reason. I just I just couldn't remember it and it came to mind. So yeah, John Campia, you suck. Spider-Men are all fantastic, aren't they? I just, I just think they're great. I love the dialogue, the witty banter they get into. They talk about the organic webbing, which I'm, again, I, I like the organic webbing. I think it's great. They bond a lot over some war stories about losing their Uncle Ben's, about losing Gwen Stacy, about losing Aunt May. Wait, 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 what? That's right. Aunt May freaking dies in this. That was unexpected. It was ballsy. It was bold. And damn it if it didn't work perfectly. She even got to use the line. And she does kind of, I feel like, change it a little bit. I was waiting for the words to trickle out of her mouth, but then she added like two or three other ones in there. I'm like, wait, no, no, go back and do this again. It was still awesome though. I also really dug the science aspect of this film. It's played out throughout different sequences where Peter Parker's trying to get the math right to get out of Doctor Strange's weird mirror world. The Spider-Men also work together to not defeat the villains per se, but to save them from themselves and their awful afflictions they've been given by putting in the hard work, getting out that chemistry set, firing up those Bunsen burners, mixing potions, concoctions are getting stirred around. They're doing science. And you know what? Willem Dafoe's somewhat of a scientist himself. Out of all the sequences in this film, that was the loudest the audience clapped. Yes, there was clapping and cheering during this film. It really was an end game style production. Now they did take some creative liberties with these villains. For the most part, a lot of the actors fall right back into the shoes they were in before. They're on their hoverboards, they're made of sand. For some reason, Sandman is in his sand appearance the entire time until the end, which I thought was kind of odd. I know they needed to have some sort of a transformation to show that he's the kind guy again. 
Uh, so maybe that was what they were going for. But some of the character motivations definitely felt unearned, and he was one of them. He, he just like quickly on a dime is like, I'm helping you, Peter. Nope, I'm actually evil as crap again. And Jamie Foxx is no longer part of the Blue Man group as Electro. He's now a regular guy. Doesn't even have his weird teeth. Somehow those got fixed. He doesn't have that insecure awkwardness like an everybody loves Raymond brother. He's just like a cool dude now. That, that was odd. He also points out one of the dumb things in Amazing Spider-Man 2 that Andrew Garfield didn't remember him uh, or, or give him the time of day, but he did. That's what always annoyed me about The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Andrew Garfield remembered his name. I mean, he didn't even stop to like say hi to him again. Like he didn't need to do that. So to like double down on that whole plot point from that stupid movie, didn't that, that wasn't a good look. I was like, what are you talking about, dude? He, he absolutely gave you the time of day. The two standouts were easily Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin and Alfred Molina as Dr. Octavius. What the writing does nail here though, are the three heroes. Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, Tom Holland, they all have the same personalities and quirks and characteristics that they always had. Toby's still that sad sack we've loved from the past. Andrew's still cracking jokes. Tom Holland's still that wide-eyed young kid from Brooklyn just trying to figure things out. We got some kick-ass scaffolding fights at the end too on the Statue of Liberty Captain America shield holding thing. I loved the fan service. It wasn't overdone for me. They did throw out some good lines. We did get a ton of hero poses. That was sweet. The hero shots of them swinging together. That was badly edited on the trailer. So, so good. Just, just so good. And the final fight between Spider-Man and the Green Goblin on the upside down Captain America shield, absolutely for symbolism. Oh, that was good. Just beating the crap out of just whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And you knew it was gonna happen. You knew Tobes was gonna get in the way, stop it. Paralleling what he went through before. And then Andrew Garfield throws in that cure. He does the uh, blade too, grabbing the shades, puts them on. But instead he jabs that antidote right in the side of his fucking neck. Hears him. And then of course the film ends on a pretty somber note as Spider-Man movies typically do. No, no swinging by American flags this time. No, we got real world consequences, kids. No one at all knows who Peter Parker is anymore. He's gotta see the love of his life working at the coffee shop, his best buddy Ned on his phone. He doesn't really have anything to say to him. I mean, he tries, but they're happy. Why bring them back into his miserable world? Is it possible? Well, yeah, it is. Uh, Tobey Maguire mentions that he and MJ are together. They made it work. Is it probable? Well, I'm not the man of science. I'm not the, I'm not the guy who knows math. They can probably crunch the numbers on how likely it is to work out. Happy's back for the third outing. I was legit concerned they were gonna shoot him when he was in the car after pulling up to that battle scene in the apartment building. Thankfully, they didn't. Um, it's always nice to see Happy. John Favre's great. Uh, they had a nice little moment at the cemetery at the end of the film. And then the credits roll and we're left with maybe a couple of uh, endings. I only stayed for one because the kids and I had to go to a choir concert for my daughter after. So we were only able to s attend the, the first, which was... <laughs> which was the Venom thing, oh my god. Here's the deal, I don't like the Venom movies. I thought Venom, Let There Be Garbage was just awful. Just an embarrassing film. If you like it, fine, whatever. Get, be mad at me if you want. But at the end of Let There Be Carnage, they tease that Venom's gonna go into the multiverse and, and join up with Tom Holland's character. Well, this kind of continues that. He's here, he knows of him, but then he disappears back to his planet after Tom Holland fixes everything. So it was all completely useless outside of some symbiote that was left behind that will most likely be the villain for the fourth picture. When that sequence opens up and the audience is at like a massive crescendo and to have the scene fall completely on its face after like a minute, hearing the audible groans was freaking hilarious. People were just like, Ugh, what? What was the point? And yes, maybe there'll be some cockamamie way to get him back there. Uh, but from what I'm gathering, it was all to just get the symbiote into his world and, and we'll be dealing with the new Venom. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I, don't, I don't really care. I'd prefer if Venom stays away from the MCU based on the two films. Okay, I think I rambled on long enough. Let me know if I missed something crucial. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Did you like the movie? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What about the twists? What about the reveals? Did they work for you? Do you like Andrew Garfield now as much as I do? We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out together. Subscribe if you haven't, share the video around, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care. 
Hey, since I still have you and it is the holidays, maybe think about joining me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. You can leave just $1 a month to say, hey, Merry Christmas, Adam. I like your Spider-Man review. Here you go. Or if you're feeling extra generous, there's a $4.99 plan right here on YouTube via the join button. Be part of that uh, swanky membership and, and just know that your support goes to help me continue making these videos. I appreciate it.